Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble short consultor. Yes, I've been away again. I'm sorry. Uh, so, it's been, as of a couple days ago, 17 months since my stroke. So, just thought I'd do a quick update that the regularly scheduled programming will continue shortly as of next, this upcoming Wednesday. So, I've been gone again for about a month. So, let's just explain kind of what's happened since... September. So in September, I had a rather significant event in my world happen. That can be sort of described in the video. I had to take my own advice, the video immediately before this one. So I've, in the last eight weeks, I've done three weeks of intensive Monday to Friday, like eight hour days, six hour days of, of therapy. And then that is now turned into three and a half hours a week of therapy. Uh, so some of that therapy is centered on uh, PTSD, uh, and some of that is on other issues that are more um, that, are, that are that are related to my stroke, but of a different matter. Unfortunately, due to reasons I can't go into, I can't go into that. So that being said. Um, I've been on a bit of a, well, in therapy. <laughs> so for those of you that have never been to therapy, like, he's in therapy. Well, sad fact, once you've had a stroke, which is technically an acquired brain injury, uh, a lot of things in your world change. Uh, unfortunately, one of the side effects due to my stroke has been PTSD. Uh, that has required some intervention. Not that I've had an intervention, like on that program where like people sit down, but I recognized in myself that, that things because of the PTSD or what looked like PTSD um, and has been diagnosed as PTSD uh, needed some help, right? So that being said, I'm taking care of myself. So it can be a bit draining, uh, from, I'll be honest, to try to generate content that's not kind of related to my situation uh, So in, in specific because... I kind of have a lot of homework to do uh, through the therapy, and it's just I don't really want to discuss my situation per se. But that's not to say that I'm going to discontinue making content because I really do enjoy uh, making my content. I, I do enjoy making the content for those of us that have had stroke or people that are the caregiver of stroke folk. I also enjoy um, sharing the ups and downs of my journey, but also helping people understand their journey. So, because there is no handbook for, I just had a brain injury, right? There is no, there is no textbook that you can go and get that'll tell you exactly what to do. There is no definitive medical resource on, you've just had a brain injury. You know, there is no, there is no central library for, you know, your brain just tried to kill you because of a blood clot or a brain bleed or you had a TIA or it was a left brain stroke, it was a right brain stroke, it was a brain stem stroke, it was a this stroke, it was a that stroke, it was a, you know, a concussion. If we consider, now most of you won't know who I'm about to talk about and that's perfectly okay. So when you consider the case of Phineas Gage, and I'm going to do a video about Phineas at some point. So Phineas Gage was the latter 1800s, I believe 1890s. Uh, he was a railway worker. He had a three and a half foot metal spike basically driven through his head like this or like that. Basically, yeah, I think it was like that. So, and it was driven right through his head. Uh, left a rather noticeable hole uh, and it took a hunk of his brain with it. Well, medical science between 1850 and 1890 was either amputate or you're going to die. Well, they can't really amputate your head, so they just expect him, expected him to expire. Uh, the length and breadth of medical knowledge, medical understanding, and medical capability at that time was give him some laudanum, make him happy, and just wait for him to pass. Fun fact, he didn't die. Uh, he lived for a while. Um, and when you consider that Phineas Gage uh, is basically... In modern medical parlance, patient zero of the discovery of traumatic brain injury. 
Now that's not to say that there haven't been other patients before Phineas Gage, but I'm going to make the argument that Phineas Gage was probably the first patient in the modern age of medicine where we had some abilities to diagnose, we had some abilities for investigation, we had some abilities of a true scientific understanding. Like we weren't dealing with vapors and humors and things of that nature. We we're dealing with, with true science. I'm going to be honest, the medical neurological community, in some instances, have made vast, vast advancements in understanding and diagnosing and treatment of brain injury. However, in other cases, we still have relatively the same level of understanding. And there's many reasons behind that. So, because there is no one definitive tome, you know, the Encyclopedia Brainica, you know, the, you, there's no such thing. And every brain injury, be it traumatic from an accident like Mr. Phineas Gage or, or myself from having a stroke or other people I'm aware of, and I, I have a, a social media relationship that have had, had a concussion or or concussion and a stroke. There's no one resource. So in some cases, you have to kind of stumble through it all, you know, and, and, and sort of, it's like throwing darts in a dark room. You got to find your own, find your own avenues. So I, I recognized in myself that I needed to go and get help for some of the problems that were created because of my stroke. Without the stroke, I wouldn't have PTSD. That's this foregone conclusion. Uh, without the stroke, I wouldn't currently be on a leave of absence. That's also like a fact. Um, more than likely, without the stroke, I wouldn't be on a leave of absence. But the last, since September, uh, when I had my emergency, uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've gained a lot of resources. I've, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about the dilemmas that I currently face on a sort of day-in, day-out basis. Uh, I've also learned a lot about, you know, the relationship I'm in and, and how strong it is and, and, and how encouraging it is and, and how much um, the relationship I have with my girlfriend is probably the best thing ever. Uh, and if it wasn't for her, uh, things would be drastically different. So on that note, I'm going to do a few more videos on uh, caregiver support, uh, caregiver resources. And I'm going to start continuing uh, to develop and create new content. And uh, that content is going to start on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to answer all of the questions that have accumulated since I've done my last response video. Um, and, and that will start again on Wednesday. That'll be in a two-parter, uh, one that I've previously done, but I forgot, I keep forgetting to release. Uh, and then uh, a part two to that, answering all the questions up until today, the 23rd of November. Uh, I'm gonna do an update video to the Jessica and Eve situation because the BC Human Rights Tribunal has made a judgment. Uh, and surprisingly enough, it's almost as if they took my video about that situation and used it as their judgment, which is kind of unique. A lot of the things I said as talking points, they also reiterated. And then if there's something you, be it you have like a concussion related injury, be it you've had a traumatic brain injury, be it you've had an acquired brain injury, be it you have aphasia, anomia, apraxia, be you the support person or uh, a significant other in the relationship of someone who's had a brain injury or a concussion. You know, regardless of your situation, you've come to my channel for various reasons. If there's content you would like to see me generate, please reach out to me on Twitter, the Twitter handle is in the description down below. Just go on Twitter and go Stroke Assaulter. You're going to find me. Um, you can email email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com or you can leave a comment in the comment section down below. I will update and respond to all comments. If there's something you want to see me generate content about, I will happily do that. Just under a couple of provisos. One, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a social worker. I'm not a neurologist. I have no professional accreditation or alphabet soup 
behind my name. I'm just a guy who had a stroke, who has had a relatively successful recovery in many respects, who has a history of working in mental health, specifically a number of years working uh, with acquired and traumatic brain injury patients and clients many years ago before my stroke. I'm just a guy uh, who has the ability to do research and understand it. I'm not saying that you don't, but you know, that's just, I base everything off science uh, or the best research I can find, um, you know, and, and I'm passionate about uh, neurological injury and neurological injury recovery, regardless of how that has come in your direction. Uh, I'm also passionate about invisible disabilities and how those of us with invisible disabilities can be easily discriminated against. I'm also a, a passionate and recently become not an advocate per se, but an advocate, I guess, of for those of us with disabilities. Um, an advocate for those of us that have disabilities don't need to be treated in a dysfunctional or, or disregarding style. Um, I'm, ad, I'm, I'm passionate about mental health and, and mental health recovery. So if any of these topics strike a chord or ring a bell with you, and you'd like to see me generate content about it. Like, for example, you've seen some magical experimental treatment that involves some type of food and it's supposed to help cure your stroke. Please send me the information and I'll happily debunk it because there is no cure for a brain injury. It, once an organ has been significantly damaged, there's there's no go back seats. You don't get a mulligan. Um, you know, if, you, if your doctor has told you something and you would like some more research done about it, I, I will happily research it. Just keep in mind, I'm not a doctor. I can't give you an educated opinion. I can't give you a diagnosis. I can just do the research and, and generate my own perceptions and observations about it. Ultimately, if anything I talk about strikes a chord with you, if anything I talk about you'd like to investigate on your own terms with your own clinical team, please bring your specific concerns to your clinical team, ask them the questions, have them generate the responses and work with your clinical team, be that a psychologist, a neuropsychologist, a psychiatrist, a audiologist, a neurologist, a occupational speech therapist, physiotherapist, social worker, whoever that may be, take your specific questions about your specific concerns, needs, issues to your clinical team and, and have them generate a plan with and for you so that way you get the best potential outcomes. Because a lot of people I see on Facebook and the stroke groups I belong to start ac asking questions like, hey, what did you do to get better? What worked for you? What didn't? You know, and I'll do another video about comparing stroke outcomes or comparing brain injury outcomes uh, and, and why we as stroke or brain injury folks should never be doing that. So if you happen to be enjoying my content, if you happen to be a brain injured person yourself, stroke folk, traumatic brain injury, post-concussion syndrome, please like, share, subscribe. If you happen to be someone that's taking care of the supporter of someone that's, you know, had, had a brain injury, a concussion, stroke, what have you, please point the channel up to them, get them to like, share, subscribe. The content I generate may be beneficial to someone. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled and confused, they just have magically immediately lost their sense of balance. Someone who's having vision problems, they can't see out of one eye, they only see in grayscale, they only see like a little dot in the world, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Uh, someone who has facial droop, there's a noticeable visual slackening on one side of the face. Right? Uh, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Uh, someone who has uh, the inability to smile equally effectively or possibly at all. Slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the, the ability, they, they can't stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.